Hi, this is Doug Burks with Security Onion, and in this video we're going to be looking at ELSA. So we double click on the ELSA icon on the desktop. That's going to start up Chromium, and we're going to maximize our window, go down to proceed anyway. Then we're going to be prompted for username and password. We're going to use the same squeal username and password that we set during the setup wizard. And then we're going to get logged into ELSA. Again, ELSA is a nice web interface for hunting through your logs. So you're going to have access to all of your bro logs. You're going to have access to uh, your standard syslog. You're going to have access to OSEC alerts and OSEC logs. And you'll be able to slice and dice all of those, regardless of whether you have hundreds, thousands, millions, or even billions of logs. ELSA is going to make it very easy for you to ask a question and get the answer that you're looking for very, very quickly. All right, so here's our ELSA web interface. You can see at the top we have 18,000 logs archived. And so what we can do is we can just start by looking at some of the logs that we have available. So by default, here are the bro logs that we have available. And we're going to start with the bro con log. So I can just select that and click Submit Query. And that's going to say, hey Elsa, show me all of the connection records that you have. Show me all of the session data that you have. So now Elsa comes back with 7,000 session records. We don't really want to go through those one by one. So let's do some data reduction. Let's make it a little bit easier for us to grok this. So let's group by source IP. And as you can see very, very quickly, ELSA has grouped all of those 7,000 logs by source IP. So you can see the top talkers on your network. If we go back to the original tab, we can then group by destination IP. Here we see the top destinations on our network. So as you can tell, this makes it very, very quickly, this makes it very, very easy to quickly get situational awareness on what's going on in your network. If we group by destination port, we can look for interesting outbound ports. We would expect to see port 80, port 53. We might not expect to see port 44, 45, so we might want to drill into that. So we can click on that. That's going to show us all the records with destination port 44, 45, and we can continue our investigation from there. So let's go to the next log type that we have, and that's going to be our bro DNS logs. If you have bro enabled, then bro is going to be logging every single DNS request and response that it sees. So we say, hey Elsa, show me all of your bro DNS logs. We've got 67 of them, but we can actually collapse that down by grouping by host name. So now in the listing you see here, you'll notice some Microsoft specific things like Workgroup and MS Browse. And that's because Bro is actually logging any Windows NetBIOS name service request that it sees to the DNS log. If we just want to see true DNS requests, we can filter and only show port 53. And here are our true DNS requests. So we can go through here and sort of our, our standard legitimate sites that we would expect to see on our network are going to bubble to the top. But then we might see some more suspicious looking host names like nrtjo.eu. So maybe we want to drill into that and figure out what was the workstation IP that actually generated that DNS request. Maybe we need to pivot on that. So that's DNS. So now let's go and look at our next bro log type which is going to be the bro HTTP log. So again, if you have bro enabled, it's going to log every single HTTP request that it sees. So here we have 187 HTTP records. And you can see get requests, you can see the fully qualified domain name, you can see the URI, you can see the user agent. Again, we don't want to go through these one by one, so let's collapse this down and let's group by site. And once again, you have all of your popular legitimate sites bubbling to the top. 
So the first three are apple.com. We would expect to see that on our network. But then after that, we see rapidshare.com.eyu32.ru. That's a Russian site. That's probably not expected on our network. And then down below that, we see sploitme.com.cn, a Chinese site. We probably don't expect to see that on our network either. So maybe we need to drill into that. So we take a look at that, and we see... So it was a GET request to sploitme.com.cn, and the referrer was actually this Russian site that we looked at earlier. Well, that's interesting. Maybe we need to drill into that. So let's click on Info. And we click on Plugin, Get PCAP. This is going to pivot us over to the CAPME web interface, just like we saw before with Snorby. We're going to enter our squeal username and password, submit that request. So that's going to go to our PCAP store and retrieve the entire TCP stream for that session. And so now we see the GET request coming from the workstation going to splitme.com.cn. The client side is highlighted in blue and the server side is highlighted in red. So we can scroll down and we see the server's response. We see another GET request from the client. We see the server's response. Now look at this server response down here. We can't read this. This is not human readable. The reason is, is because the server used gzip encoding. Uh, the vast majority of HTTP servers on the web today use gzip encoding because they can save on their bandwidth costs by compressing the data before they send it. Well, that makes it more difficult for us as analysts because we can't read what's going on here. But if we go back up, we click on close, we choose bro, and we resubmit that request. Now if we scroll down, instead of seeing binary data, we actually see human readable HTML. And if we take a look at this, this is actually obfuscated JavaScript, which we would not have seen before, just based on the gzip encoded response from the server. So now if we go back to ELSA, one final thing that I want to show you is we'll refresh this and we'll take a look at our bro notice. So bro has this concept of a notice. It's not necessarily bad, it's not necessarily good, but it's something you want to take a look at. So we can go to add term, go down to bro notice, and submit the query. We then group by notice type. And we see some interesting bro notices here. The first one that I'll point you to is the malware hash registry match. So whenever bro sees a Windows executable going across HTTP traffic, it creates an MD5, and you see those MD5s there. So it then takes the MD5 for that executable and submits it to the Team Cymru malware hash registry. If Team Cymru responds and says, yes, I've seen that before, then that particular executable is considered malware. So we can click on this and we can see that this nrtjo.eu that particular site did send us an executable which matched the malware hash registry. So we can take a look at those, we can take a look at invalid server certs, so Bro is automatically verifying every single SSL cert that it sees and if there's anything invalid it'll notify you of that. Incorrect file type, this is actually uh, one of these is the same nrtjo.eu site that we looked at before. So because we went to loading.php, but the site actually sent back an executable, the executable didn't match the .php extension that we requested, so Bro calls that an incorrect file type. It's a good way of catching malware many times. And you can see also that same Bro notice was fired based on our visits to sploitme.com.cn. So if we go back to our bro notices, uh, again we can see our MD5s. And so each of these represents an executable file, a Windows executable transferred over HTTP, which bro then created an MD5 for. So that concludes this short overview of ELSA. Thanks for tuning in.